it's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer and we are finally, finally out and about again for probably the first time in 2024. We're in York, we have arrived into York and apparently for the first out and about for the pubs and bars of York apparently there's a nice little brew pub actually in the station on platform three so that's where we're going to start right so we're on platform three i'm looking for this pub i can't find it platform 5a it's a beautiful old railway station here in york um, i've been to york a few times uh, ah there we are it's called the york tap there we go Bristol Temple Meads, Taunton, Pivacoo Parkway, Edgeton Lane. Oh, what an amazing little setting this is. Amazing little pub. It's, uh... Oh, we got some music, so I'll have a quick look in here with the uh, music going on. We don't want to get it kind of monetized. So, um, we got some Thornbridge. Yeah, there's the beers. And this, yeah, this is the York Tower. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I think that I was uh, the Eurythmics playing one, isn't it? Right. Thank you, reserve a seat. Reservations can be made for free First up pub, to five York minutes before departure. Uh, I think this is, yeah, way out. There we go. So, exit straight away. Uh, First time using the GoPro for an out and about. I'm looking forward to seeing how it performs. Uh, I want to make my way to maybe the Blue Bell in the centre of York. But let's, let's first of all, let's have a look co coming straight out the train station. Grand, fantastic old buildings. And then straight away, look, you have the, all the cherry blossoms out in May. And then you've got the, the boundary wall there of uh, what is probably York Castle. You can walk along all of these walls up here. Straight away, look, York Brewery. So, uh, let's get across the road. And let's have a look. What a lovely place. What a lovely place. So, um, let's go and find the... We found the first pub. Let's go and find the second pub. Just found this place. The Hooting Owl Distillery established in 2017 now of course i'm a beer drinker don't drink too much in the way of uh, spirits but this is worth a look at because i did pop my head in here earlier on and they've got some fantastic i'm up with brew york i'm up with their beer festival and they've got lots of brew york on thank you very much for having me in and of course my favorite ever vice beer they got some paul on there so uh, i'm just gonna have a little look at your distillery if that's, if that's good. What a, this is a place to come if you're in york in there this time. Look at this lovely place. Fantastic. Wow, look at this. Wonderful. Now oh, that looks like, kind of like brewing equipment, doesn't it? But it's of a different kind. <laughs> what a lovely place. A really nice place. Right, on we go on our travels. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, cheers. So there's the Hooting Owl Distillery where we just were and I've just come across this Regency, look at this, Regency uh, Chinese supermarket type place, look at that hot pepper stir fry noodles, all your Sam Yangs, absolutely wonderful, love it. But there is a pub, I just noticed a pub on the corner here, I might just pop my head in, it's a Marston's pub so expect Marston's beer in this one it's called the corner pin uh, carpentry wise being a carpenter myself in my former years that there is uh, what a corner pin is there on the on the sign um, proper old fashioned like kind of stained glass windows in this one um, let's get in there 
Right, so we got permission to go into the pub, just spoke to the owner. Now this pub is 400 years old. Everything in New York is really, really old. So going into the pub here, it's got a fantastic, fantastic pool area, dartboard, lovely little kind of area here for outdoor drinking and sitting. Yeah, fantastic. So 400 year old pub. Here we go then, into the main bar. What a fantastic place this is, love it. Great. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Brilliant. That was the corner pin of York. Right, let's move on to the next one. So just stopping off here by the main river that runs through York. Uh, I, I was up here a few years ago with my wife Mel and we actually stayed in that hotel there, the Queen's Hotel on the corner. Uh, we were with, with Brew York during that situation of 2020. Um, there are a couple of bars up. I'm gonna keep this rolling because there's some lovely bars, like Friday afternoon bars along the banks of the river here. Lothar, uh, you've got the waterfront pub there. Lovely little old pub there that's le leaning over type of thing. And then you've got a, a like a typical kind of slug and lettuce place over there in the corner. So let's walk. Let's walk and talk to these because I think at the end of the bridge you'll be able to get down on a set of steps. So this would have been obviously where traders were coming up and down the river. Uh, you know, thirsty traders pulling up with their boats with, with all of their trade. Uh, everything used to come on through boats in the UK years ago. Canals, boats, rivers, that sort of thing being delivered goods being delivered around the UK they'd be very thirsty and this is where they come for maybe a stay over maybe a night over maybe some beer I don't know maybe some wine and of course some food uh, so we're headed in this direction uh, normally we're gonna make our way into the center but I'm just gonna make my way down yeah look at this I absolutely love York and on a beautiful sunny day there it is look sun's out absolutely fantastic so here is look at this we're right next to the river here you can see where, where we've had the winter floods the the river's blooming looks like it's kind of come up over the side here so that's the hotel we stayed in and here there's the slug and lettuce I, I, i'm not sure you want me to go in a slug and lettuce do you um, but what a beautiful setting this is for a pint. So this is called... This is called the King's Arms. Oh, lovely. lovely looking old pub. What I'll do, I'll go in each one, ask if I can go in and film. And then we'll get the indoors. But I don't, you know, it's one of these type of situations. You probably just want to see the outside, don't you? Here's the waterfront. Looks like more of a restaurant, this one. Lil's Bar and Bistro. And then on the corner here. On the corner here, we got the Lothar. Which, I mean, I think we might start in here. Why not? Why not? Let's start in here, but I'll go and ask if I can film. Right, so the Lothar, let's get in here. Um, it's very modernised in here. They've got a con combination of like old fashioned stone floors and steps, and then nice big kind of glass openings. Nice base, nice little bay areas here to, to look at. And then we got. The beers, which are Beer Moretti, Cruz Campo, John Smith, Strongbow, and Guinness plus a Dixon's Pale Ale. But yeah, this is a this is a really nice looking pub. I can see myself chilling out, relaxing here. Cool. Oh, let's go out this way. Thank you. Right. Yeah, let's go out that door. And then we got something called chucking hot pot over there which sounds amazing there's a wine bar up on the corner there 
taxi rank, uh, something on the corner there with live shows. Sounds interesting. <laughs> Lots of like, kind of like stag do's, handles, sort of thing. So this looks like it's a Thiexton's pub. Let's have a look. Yeah. Lily's Bar and Bistro. So these look more, I don't know, we're saying traditional pub. Let's try and get in the waterfront then. Right, so we can go in the waterfront. Let's get in here then. Yeah. Right, follow these ladies up. Eh? Okay, so all, again, all of these pubs, they're all going to be from like four, five hundred years old. Look at this, look. This is where the flood level hit in 1982. My goodness me, so this fireplace here, the water level from that river out there came up at high... AH is at some kind of high tide marking on that piece of wood there. My goodness me. But yeah, lovely, lovely looking pub. Again, on the uh, on the waterfront of York, on the river. Uh, and here are the what is the name of the river? I'm sorry. The Ouse. It's the River Ouse, is it? Ah, there we go. Thank you very much. So Thixon's Pale, Guinness, Cruz Campo, Amstel and Strongbow. That's how there's, there's guests as well, you can stay, stay in this pub. Great, right, on to the next pub. Okay, so I went into the King's Head and I immediately worked out, because they only had Sam Smith's beers on the bar, it's a very, very Sam Smith's looking pub in there. Um, they don't allow any filming, unfortunately. I did go in and ask, I said, look, I'm filming a documentary for the pubs and bars of of York. It would have been amazing to have got in there because it's such a fantastic, lovely old building. It looks like it's been here forever. Well, let's have a look, shall we? 1898. Oh, it seems an awful lot older than that, to be honest with you. Yeah, but it's right, it's right on the river. Amazing place. Can't even film through the window. Um, bit of a shame. So, I will probably pop back there on my... I'm almost tempted to turn the camera off and go back and have a pint because I do like their beer. I do like their beer. Their beers are generally pretty... Well, I'm just a fan. I'm just a fan. Um, but I won't. I won't go back. I'll, I'll carry on filming for the time being and I'll make a mental note that the King's Head on the waterfront is a lovely, lovely Sam Smith's pub which I might go to if I got time later on in the weekend because I am here for the whole weekend uh, O'Neill's, there's an O'Neill's over there did you need me to go in and film an O'Neill's uh, they've kind of put purveyors purveyors of whiskey, stout and craft ales um, you probably don't need me to go to Tesco's either do you? <laughs> uh, so well, as I mentioned earlier in the video what I'm looking for really is the blue bell now I was told I need to get into the blue bell early because if I don't it'll literally be kind of slightly mayhem -y. later on I tell you what, if I can run, run across the road here as I've noticed only because I was down here last year this is a quite interesting Look how old everything is. Little lanes. You've got an O'Neill's here. Look at this little kind of like just doorways leading through into Old Bath. This is an ancient city. This used to be the capital, the capital of the UK once upon a time. So yeah, here we go. Here's a here's a Yates's bar with horse racing and stuff going on. But what a lovely quaint little quaint little area this is, look at that. Out doorways going down into cellars and yeah you can tell it's been here forever haven't it. 
Look at this giant stone wall we're coming out of this lane from. Uh, what was that? That was O'Neill's. So this is this is Yates. Uh, again, fantastic little pub. Look at this. Look at this uh, little alleyway here. It's been here for hundreds and hundreds of years. Sound a bit like Fred Dibner then, didn't I? Uh, flagstone floors, probably been here for hundreds and hundreds of years. And yeah, here, I'll quickly poke my head in here, I'm not going to do too much, but what, what I really like about this area and these pubs is like, you're walking through little alleyways to get here, but when you do get here, look at the size of this place. Look at the size of this place, it's absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. So you're walking through little alleyways, and when you finally get here, the great big pubs. I think that's an old church there. So I'm definitely going to make my way to the Blue Bell. Um, let's carry on walking. Right, next place, look at this building here. Looks like it's been here. Yeah. Look at it sagging into the road. This has got to be one of the most famous, kind of lovely looking buildings in the whole of York. Ah, right, there we are. So, uh, uh, Thomas Herbert, born in this house in 1616. Uh, not sure who Thomas Herbert was, to be honest. Thomas Herbert Bar. There we go. Uh, amazing the lady package you have. Uh, and it's the home of York Gin. So if you go in here, and there are lots of like different gins and stuff from York. Uh, hello, do you mind if I film your Oh lovely, thank you very much. So there we go, this is uh this is the lovely looking York gin. Maybe I'll pop back in there. Uh, pick some of this stuff up. Thank you very much. Great. Right, okay, so uh, had to run out of there. We had, uh, there she comes on the radio. Let's have a look down um, Lady Packet's yard. This is the thing with York. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. My goodness me. Look at these old buildings. Literally, like, you got, you got a, a, a a lintel there and then just where the lintel is there's, there's a building literally within three or four meters of it i don't know three or four stories high and it's all this one building here but i'm not sure if the gopro is actually doing this any justice the buildings are nearly top touching at the top um it's very harry potter like isn't it very very harry potter like but let's go and have a little look at um Lady Packett's yard then. Maybe it's something quite interesting to look at. The old beams look. They're not just put there for fun, they're actually people are what I heard people walking above them. Ah right, it just leads out into it looks like an old brewery or something there. Right. Yeah, so yeah, these joists that I when I was walking under just now. You can see the joist there, and you can see there's a window above with people walking about there. Uh, so, <coughs> what I'm going to try and do now, apparently I'm around the corner from the Blue Bell. So let's... Uh, yes, thank you. you. Right. So we've got Max and Spencer's in front of us. Apparently, now, now it's a uh, big... It's a big stag and hen place this is. Uh, lots of youngsters running around. You probably just saw. Um, so apparently the blue bell is around here somewhere. I'll have a quick look. If I can't find it, I'm showing you a bit of York anyway. The Stone Bow, traditional free house. That's a, probably a Sky Sports pub there. The blue, oh, there it is. I found the blue bell. I found it. Let's have a quick. I mean, this is going to be your. Actually, it's a Weatherspoons, I think. 
Is that a weather spoons? Looks like to me. Uh, might be a stone house club. I mean, can I put my head in here? I suppose I could very quickly. There you go. Okay. It's all your kind of Guinness and Strongbow and stuff. Um, you've got the Force Gate tap here. Real ale food, beers and cocktails. That looks uh, that looks quite interesting. Wondering if we can pop our head in here. I've settled down now into the video. I always get a bit. Oh, it's um, oh they got brew york though. Hey, they got some brew york going on here. So let's have a little look down here. Right. So Sagra's eating a uh, Peroni and lots of different craft beers. Look, look at this. Brew York and what that? No. One, two, three, four, they've got six cast lines as well. Job too. Look at this. And then a little bar there. There we go. Now I was looking. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Right. Now I need to go into this pub and ask permission. So um, the reason why I'm looking, for, look, looking forward to going into this pub and recording in this pub is because it's one of the only pubs in the UK where... No, sorry. It's one of the only pubs in the UK where the interior is listed. So the outside of the building looks like an unassuming pub. Me and my wife walked past this place three or four times in 2020. Never poked our head in there. But yeah, it's a, the interior is listed. They're not allowed to touch any of the interior of this building without getting, I don't know, the listed people involved. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go in and very quickly... Do you know what? Should we just do it? Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Look, already, look, you can see. The interior is, is so, so old in this pub. Let's poke our heads in. Right, um, I got some news regarding the Blue Bell. Now, the owner of the pub, John, his name is, has, uh, he's not in until four o'clock, which is half an hour's time. Um, the, the lady band mate made there said, if you come back at four o'clock, John, John loves to be on video and he'll tell you all about the pub. So I'm gonna go back in half an hour's time. But in the meantime, why don't I show you the shambles? Now this is a really interesting place, very, very touristy. Um, I'm not sure if there's any pubs down there, but it's very Harry Potter-like. The, all of the, all of the buildings are literally touching each other. They're literally leaning into each other and touching each other. And we'll find it now, I think. Excuse me, where did I find the shambles? Just barely, just go all the way. Yeah? Just, just, yeah. All right, that's just down there, right, just okay. You. Thank you very much. You're welcome, my friend. Thank you. Right, here we go. Yeah. So apparently it's just uh, Apparently it's down here somewhere. Right. Look at this building, it's all on different levels. Three different levels. Uh, I love my buildings as much as I love my... Uh, my as much as I love my beer, look at this. So this is, is it the shambles? Or not? Yes, look. There we go. The shambles. Let's have a look at this then. So, world, world, world famous shambles. Known all around the world. Look at this. Little areas here. You can eat and drink. I'd love to live in this city. Absolutely love to live in this city. Look at this, there's the market. Thai place, burritos, tea and coffee, or oh, hot dogs and fries. Absolutely wonderful. In fact, I think I think that vlog, I think that right, my takeaway vlog did a thing on this hot dog stand. I think just a couple of years ago. <coughs> the shop that must not be named. Here we go, very Harry Potter like. Right, let's get down here then, shall we? Oh you Little alleyways. Yeah, here we go. So, 
some of these buildings must be, I don't know, a thousand years old, maybe older. I haven't seen a pub yet, it's more, for me, it's more kind of tea rooms and that sort of thing. So I'm going to go, just thinking about the blue bell again, as I get to the most famous part of the shambles where it's really touching each other. I'm going to go back for a pint of um, Rudgate's Ruby Mild, <laughs> one of my favourite pints of all time, look at that. The buildings are literally, well, they're in shambles, aren't they? Well, the, in, in Wales, we would say that building's broken its back. That's the term we use in Wales, the building's broken its back. Look at this. You know, you come to these picturesque places and you always seem to find a Rowley's Fudge Pantry, don't you? We have one in Tenby. Uh, oh my god, look, look at the queue. Sorry, what are the, what's the queue for? Oh, the ghost merchant. Oh, what's in there? They sell beer in there. They don't. Oh, it's all ghosts. All oh, right. It's not a pub then. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> look at this. Fresh pies. My goodness me, look at that pie. Medium pork pie, six pound. That looks fantastic. Okay. So that was the shambles. Uh, I am getting rather thirsty now. Um, I might find my way back. I might find my way back to the Blue Bell. I might go and have a, a, a Rudgate Ruby Mild. Oh, let's have a look at Shambles Market a little bit first. There's a place here called the Market Cat, and it's a Thornbridge pub. If you want to pause the video and have a little look at that. Uh, world Beer Free... Oh, this... Pivney. Pivney, World Beer Free House. Oh my goodness, all German beer, look at this. It's all German stuff. Veltins, Mittel, oh. Weisterfan, they got Weisterfan on keg. Oh my goodness me. Five Stone Walker. Is that the door? To, is it open? Yeah, 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 of yeah, course. Sorry. Do you mind if I film in here? Uh, ask the boss. She's the one behind the bar. She manages okay. the place. Okay, thank you very much. Right, so uh, we got permission to go in and record. So I'm going to be talking over this one because they've got a lot of music going on. Uh, but look at this. German, German, German. Absolutely love it. Lots of different German beers. Shopper Hopper Yonder, which is not German. Veltins. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we made it to this wonderful um, bar. We went in, had a little look around. Pivney uh, will be a free house. I've, um, I took my coat off because I'm sweating conkers. Um, <sighs> but look, I have a Weinstefana rice beer. First beer of the day couldn't think of a better beer to have for my first beer of the day. Six hours on a train, straight into filming, round the pubs of York. Cheers everyone. Mm. Oh, stone the crows. Stone the crows. Absolutely need that. Oh. Ah, there we are. So, um, I need to go back to the Blue Bell at four o'clock. It's probably 20 to four now. So I need to get there. A 20 minute point in. No, 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 no. You're paid enough. And then we'll go and film the Blue Bell. And then uh, I might end up, I'm not sure. I might end up going back to, um, to the brew. I might, after that, go straight to the Hanley Tap the Brew York place, um, where their brewery is, and we'll have a little wander around there and uh, and, and do stuff in there. Uh, meet Lee, of course, run around the brewery, see their brewery, try some of their beer, and they've got a lovely Thai restaurant on the first floor, so we'll go and eat some Thai food as well. I'm gonna finish this point first though. Cheers, everyone. 
Right, we switched to the iPhone for this because the iPhone works really well in the dark or in a darker place. This is the Bluebell. We have found John and John is going to give us a bit of a talk around... Um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> so this is it. This is uh, the Blue Bell. Quite a small pub, but everything inside here is absolutely listed. It's a listed, listed bar. I'm gonna, hopefully, if I can, I'm gonna see people serving through hatches and and whatnot. Um, John, hello, John. How are you doing? Hello there. How's it going? How are you doing? Let me shake your hand. Uh, how are you doing? So, uh, John, you're the owner of the Blue Bell. Yes, I am. Um, I know you got a lot of customers, so I'll be really quick with this. Um, tell me a little bit about the place. So, the uh, the Blue Bell was first built in 1600, so it's quite an old building, uh, which brings with it an awful lot of uh, interesting characteristics. The the time it was turned into a pub was 1798, um, and when it was turned into a pub, the building was actually a warehouse. Right. And there was a lot of church bells. Uh, oh, that was rubbish. I'm going to start all that. Let me get into it. Let me get into it. Okay. While you do, I'll I'll keep on I'll keep on showing it around. Um, I think my yeah, it's the, I think it might be that one there. Is that my pint there? Sorry. It is. It is. It is. I'm gonna have a little sip of my pint. Hang on. That's it. Right. So. As you can see, proper old place, serving through hatches. Um, what's really interesting about this pub is the fact that curtains out the back, they're literally serving through the back of a curtain, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So you've got hatches and bits. No worries, no worries, John. You, you, you. I'll tell you what. I'll film you pouring a pint. Look at that. This is this is what it's all about. So I got so quite a large is, American audience, and they like to see this kind of well, handful stuff. Uh, this is very important, is this? Because this is a method of barring which is pretty much unique to the United Kingdom. Right. Um, as you know, we exported democracy, railways, <laughs> the education system, and everything else around the world. But we never, for some reason, actually exported our method. We should have done, shouldn't we? We absolutely should have done. We should have done, yeah. So essentially what we do here is we do a two-part pour. Oh, like so a Czech Republic. So yes, absolutely. So first part of a pour, you're going up to around about three quarters. And the reason for this is because each one of these ale pumps has a different little personality. They okay. all have different amounts of wear and tear. Yeah. And also, when you first put a cask on, it can be quite lively. Yeah. And it can lose that liveliness in the day or two that you're selling it. So you have to manipulate with your own body strength the pump in order to generate the head that you're looking for. And what we're looking for in the north of the country is around about a 5% head, which is around about what you can see here. That's also the legal limit for the United Kingdom. So what we do in the north, because we want to make that sure that head is perfect for every customer, we take it up to three quarters, then we let it settle, we have a banter with you, yeah, absolutely. we take the money, we pour the glass of wine, we make the gin and tonic, then yeah. right at the end, after we've taken the money, we come back and we top it up. Look at that. And that way, the customer knows exactly the amount of head they're going to get. We know the amount of head they're going to serve. And the pint looks like it should do when it's being served. If you just pour it straight out and it's settling on the bar, the customer's going to have to wait and most probably ask for a top up. Yep. And you don't really know what you're serving. So I'm just going to serve this. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. How are you doing? <laughs> it, it is fabulous. It is a fabulous pub. Uh, um, do, do you mind being on camera? Uh, met someone from Devon as well. Hello, how are you doing? Um, brilliant. <laughs> yes, so everything in here is listed. So everything in, the, in this building so, is listed. Yes, yeah, go. I was saying early on. Right, so the three important dates are 1600, that's when the building was built. Yep. And then 1798 is when it was turned into a pub. Okay. Now, just before it was turned into a pub, it was a warehouse. 
and that warehouse was storing an awful lot of bells from church towers which were undergoing renovation in York really? at the time. Now these bells were made out of gun metal, which right. is a very cheap form of metal. Yeah. And so all these bells were blue. So they right. actually turned the warehouse into a pub, it was full of blue bells, and yeah. so they named the pub the Blue, the blue bell. bell. So we're one of the only pubs uh, around that has kept its original name throughout its entire time here. Right. And we're named after the bell, not the flower, which an awful lot of pubs are named after. Right, of course, um, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. And so 1903 is the third date. So built in 1600, turned into a pub in 1798, but the last time a pub was decorated was 1903. So really? 121 years ago. 120. You'd never believe it. It's amazing. You just did it last week. So all of the varnish that you can see was put on here in 1903. Um, these tables, Empress tables, if you go down onto the steelwork, you'll see the bust of Queen Victoria just below the... Uh, yep. So these are called Empress tables. These were bought by the pub in 1903. Wow. These spirit barrels up here, they were bought by the pub in 1903. They're one of two sets uh, in the world, hand-painted. Wow. Wow, the varnish wow. for the bar, the windows, the flooring, the benches that everyone has sat on in here, they were made in the Wow. And it took two men nine and a half hours to make them. Now, the reason that I know all of this is because I've written a book about the history of the Blue Bell. It's called The History of the Blue Bell. And during the research of that book, I was handed a memory box from the tenants who started the decorating in 1903. Wow. And in that memory box, which has been handed down from tenant to tenant over the last 121 years, was the original receipts for the refurb, with the postal orders, all in beautiful Edwardian handwriting. So I actually have the receipts for the tables. I have the receipts for the spirit bottles. Um, and so you really do feel, um, through the book and through drinking in here, that you are just another part of history. It, it you know, really people have been doing this for centuries mm. and we're just carrying on with tradition. Yeah, yeah. People have been in here having a great time, having arguments, having yeah, fun. Of course. For, as I say, 200 years. Do you get, like, famous people coming in here as well? With... We have a fair few. Like, yeah, yeah. When... When they visit York, they like to come in, but one of the reasons is is that we're not a sort of um, we're not all that modern when it comes to social media and all that. Yeah, stuff. of course. Yeah. And if a celebrity comes in and gets a photo with me, it's never going to be going <laughs> online. In fact, I did do it once with Al Murray, the pub landlord. Oh, yeah, but yeah, he, yeah. He's a pub landlord, so, <laughs> so so that was allowed. We actually have a couple of local celebrities. I'm not even going to tell you who they are because I don't want people pestering them. Yeah. Very very famous Hollywood actors in some big franchises. They drink in here. Yeah, brilliant. They drink in the back room. Everyone knows them as Bill and Bob. Yeah. And they just leave them to normal, their own normal, devices. normal that's people. The whole part of the blue belt is I love that. Normal people. It's been a YouTuber. I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I really yeah, appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna have a little walk around. I'm gonna grab my pints and have a little Absolutely. walk around. There. Is there any anything at the back to talk about? So much. <laughs> have you got two minutes? Absolutely. Right. Let's let's, let's go. Let's go. So yeah. let's make our way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> right. Wow. What a um, what a really really interesting. What a really interesting interesting. So this is this bar hat I was just talking about. I really like that. Very very cool. Um, so toilet stand there. Does this place have a beer garden? You know. No, it doesn't. Right. Okay. So one of the really fascinating things about the Blue Belt is gender segregation. And this happened all the way up until 1985. Okay. After you, man. As you can see, no longer in place. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, this was enforced by landladies. It was not enforced by landlords. Okay. Um, and it was those landladies who wanted to separate uh, men and women. And so in the front room, you would have working class men right. only, okay. no women allowed. And in the back room, you would have married couples, married oh, middle class couples. Makes sense. Where the beer was a penny a pint more expensive in the back room. Really? You would also have table service. So you're looking at sort of 40, 50 pence per pint extra. In, oh, right. In today's terms. I see. For that pint, yeah. yeah. And, um, and yeah, it was 1985 when one of our regulars, Joan, who fortunately passed away a couple of years ago, but Joan came in with her husband one Sunday afternoon and they wanted to play dominoes. And they couldn't play dominoes because Joan had to go to the back room, husband went to the front room, and finally the landlady, who was very old at the time, yeah. relented. A um, right. little note on that landlady. <laughs> the decorator, sorry, just before we go on to that, as you can imagine, there was nowhere for widows 
There was right. nowhere for widows to drink, which is why we're in the corridor now. So you've got working class men in the front, you've got middle class couples in the back, but where can widows drink? Oh. And this is where this serving hatch comes in. Right, wow, so wow, wow. So this was where widows and single ladies would be able to have a drink and in the, in, in the parlance of the Edwardian time, they wouldn't be bothering the young men in the front and they wouldn't be stealing anyone's husband in the back. Right. And so just down here, we have what we affectionately refer to as the widow's perch which is a fold-down seat. Oh, look at that, which, yeah. Which, fold, which does fold all the way down. Yeah, you can and, see, yeah, yeah. And yeah. this is where widows would sit and be able to have a drink in the sort of off-sales corridor here, yes. Yeah. Wow, so, wow, so again, wow. again, it's just a little, little... Uh, Unbelievable little history. Little in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And um, so, uh, yeah, so just about the tenants. Um, in 1903, when the pub was refurbed, uh, yeah. and, and last decorated. The tenants were a couple called George and Annie Robinson. They were a young couple, very excited to get their first pub lease and they decorated it and they kept the receipts. Um, they had a baby girl called Edith later on in that year, yep. December 1903. Now George and Annie, uh, the reason why the pub still looks the same today because they were here for so long. Right. So George and Annie ran the pub together through uh, the 1900s, yeah. uh, through World War One, through the 20s, through the 30s, through World War II. Yeah. They had their golden winning anniversary here in 1947 and yeah. then George passed away a year later in 1948. Wow, okay. When that happened, Annie became the landlady. She'd been here from 1903, remember? Yeah. And Annie carried on running the pub on her own from 1948 right the way through the 50s until she died in 1963. Wow. So she's the longest serving landlady that yeah. the pub's ever had and one of the longest serving landladies in the country. Okay. 60 straight years of a pub. Now in yeah. 1963, there was no one to give the lease to apart from that little baby girl, Edith, who yeah. was born here in December 1903. So at 60 years old, Edith, later known as Mrs. Pinder, became the landlady. Right. And she would not have anything changed because it was the only memory she had of her parents. Right. So she right. then kept the pub exactly the same and she was here from 1963, right away through the 60s, yeah. through the 70s, through the 80s, and she finally passed away in 1992. Wow. After 89 years at the Blue Belt. Wow. And so that what we refer to that as the Robinson dynasty, that is the reason why the decor still hasn't changed to this day. Okay. Because time and time again, you had to honor your uh, ancestors. Yeah, yeah. Since Mrs. Pinder has only been three, been, been three tenants and I'm the third. Right. Um, and obviously every one of us still has her presence looming large uh, yeah. above the bar. My older regulars were younger guys when she was an old oh, lady. Oh, should they remember her? Oh, absolutely. They were here helping her out because when she was sort of 75, 80 years yeah, old, yeah. she wasn't too nimble. So they did the cellar work for her. They did the cleaning for her. One of my regulars, Amazing. Dale, was a former uh, uh, tax inspector. He did her accounts for her. And it was very much a community effort towards the end of the life. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, Fantastic. that Robertson dynasty is why the pub still looks the same today. So, so um, uh, uh, the follow-on question then is, is when, when was the year or when was the time where like there was a recognition of the importance of the interior and then it was listed yep. when, when did that happen 1958 I think 1958 yes, yeah so it was whilst Mrs Pinder was still here right uh, it was whilst Annie was still here as well um, so it then got listed it got listed as a grade 2 building uh, since since then it's been upgraded to a grade 2 star building so about 95% of all the listed buildings are grade 2 yep 4% are grade 2 star and 1% you say Paul's your York Minster they're in the grade 1 category so we're in a special little niche here where you have to get planning permission to change anything internally or externally. You know, uh, like, you know and news light like fitting or anything. Yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. amazing, and amazing. And, uh, and we never would. So, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 absolutely. We did, we did have a moment a few years ago where uh, someone was moving a stool and they smashed some of the um, Edwardian uh, light frames. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, lampshades and we moved heaven and earth we were going to antiques fairs just yeah. to get the same ones back again because it's really important yeah. to keep the pub exactly as it is yeah. Yeah. fantastic can we have a one absolutely less? yeah so this is the back room um, up until 1903 the rooms were actually reversed Right. Um, so it's a very strange thing. This door leading up to the toilets was the original front door. That was the front was door it? to the pub in 1902. Really? Yeah. Well, so that was the back lane. Yeah, there wasn't even a door there, no. The door really? was put on in 1903 by George and Annie. So the entire pub was moved around. As a right. result, we're one of the only pubs in the world which has its cellar drop at the back of a pub. Because right, of course. 120 years ago, it was actually at the front of the pub. So our right. draymen have to roll the barrels down here. And as you can see, the only parts of the walls that are damaged 
Uh, the parts uh, of the walls you can see the skirting boards the yeah. Have been down yeah, yeah goodness me so wow, this wow. was originally the front room we yep. now obviously refer to it as the back room so right. yeah, please come in look at this now i love this absolutely love this so i think this is where we sat in august i came with lee from brew york yeah. i think we may have sat in the corner or somewhere somewhere in here but wow, what what a fantastic! And obviously, the, there's some modern day signs, the hot goblin stuff. We put some uh, promotional signs up. But apart from that, all the pictures on the walls and these painted mirrors here. I also have the receipts for those from 1903. They were hung there in 1903, with the notable exception of one of these photos. Now, George Robinson was a keen amateur sportsman. Yep. And he set up an amateur football team yeah, uh, in the early 1910s. 1911 he set up a football team and uh, played a couple of seasons and he very proudly hung the photo of the first ever York amateur team up in the pub and it's still here to this day oh look at that yeah 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 unfortunately as you can see it's the 1911-1912 team a couple of years later nearly all of those young lads went off to World War One. Wow. the York and Lancaster regiment um, were shipped off to Boulogne uh, and they uh, and they were one of the first British regiments to suffer a phosgene attack and very very few of those young lads came back right yeah undeterred after the war in 1922 George Robinson, the landlord at the time, held a meeting with other businessmen in York and they formed York City Football Club in April oh. 1922 in this room. Really? Absolutely, yeah. Really? The football club that still exists today yeah, of course. Yeah, in this yeah. room. Yeah. They did try to form one before the war, but obviously then after the war they actually got around to doing it again. Yeah. So the pub is steeped in history. I always joke that it's unfortunate that York City was formed in here. If Real Madrid had been formed in here, <laughs> I'd be making a load of money from the tourism. <laughs> There's not a lot of people want to come and see the origins of York, unfortunately. I mean, this 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 is going to go down. I mean, look at the net. How, the net curtains are they like from? They look really, yeah, really, 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 really old. old. That, that window there was the original front window to the pub, and it went out onto the street. There's a now sense it's in, to it, yeah. It's enclosed and it's and it's now a storeroom and all that sort of right, thing. Right, 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 right. The entire structure of the pub has moved around. Yeah, um, yeah. But since 1903, not one single bit has been changed. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, this, this is, this is going to be an amazing one of my, one of my most got a greatest YouTube videos. I hope you like it. No, right? no, 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 no. <laughs> it's going to be part of a, the pubs and bars of yours. I've been running around all the other pubs as well, but the time you've offered me and the time you've given me is just wonderful. You're thank you, good. John. Thank you very much. Honestly, mate. I, I, thank you ever so much. Yeah, and guys. Thank you very much. Come in for a pint and enjoy yourself. Come in for a pint. Cheers. Thanks. Right. So, uh, just finishing off today's filming of the pubs and bars of the centre of York. I'm glad I've come here because this is in the centre of York. Brew York have two breweries. They have one on the outskirts of the city. They have one in the centre of the city. Um, I was invited to their bash and naturally, because it's me, I turned up to the wrong one. I went in looking for the party and whatnot and yeah, it's not here. It's at the other brewery. But... I got a pint anyway. Single hop Amarillo. Single hop Amarillo. Um, this is the tap room. There's a fantastic restaurant up there. A Korean restaurant. How you doing? You all right? A fantastic Korean restaurant upstairs. But I'm just going to go for this door here. Oh, I was, I was about to go for that door there. But I just want to show you the beer garden because I love this beer garden. This beer garden is just fantastic it's amazing and then of course it leads into the brewery so you can oh it's just no authorized persons allowed beyond this but you know what no, i can't break the rules can i i can't break the rules but what an amazing what an amazing place this is amazing i mean i'm gonna go through this way um beer garden this is where the beer is brewed very fresh very tasty very nice and then bang into into the beer hall into the beer hall yeah and I'll finish I'll finish on this uh, guys I came to the wrong place didn't I <laughs> ready yep it's beer o'clock Audrey and Earl Craft Beer I'm at the Brew York Handley Tap I'm here with Jordan. How are you doing, Jordan? You all right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's freezing. Yes, it is. It is, it is freezing. <laughs> it is freezing. It is freezing. Um, I understand, though, that you brewed this beer.
beer on a beach. Yes. Three beans. Yes. 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 So three beans. But this is our our tenth anniversary. So this was back when I was brewing in the shed, and uh, myself and a good friend uh, uh, Rob from the Soundways Brewery, we went down to the beach. Uh, there's a lovely video on YouTube. We used uh, seaweed as a fighting agent, as we know. After the beer, um, we used the sea water to cool down the water. Oh. And we used a cask as a boy, so we knew where the work was. And then we brought it back to my brewery, which at that time was a three metre by four metre shed. And we added a uh, uh, yeast bitch, uh, that was a monastery out of yeast bitch. And we used the hops, El Dorado, peach and apricot, waiiti, which is wine uh, and lemon. So we had a little fruit ball character of banana from the yeast. Uh, and that was about eight years ago, and it gets requested to come back. So now we have a full grown brewery in the centre of Brighton, and uh, it's one of the favourites. So this was one of our classics of the 10 year anniversary to bring back. Can I, can I talk to you from there like that? I mean, going back, like when we're a little bit younger, when we're doing these things in, in brewing, um, it's almost like because we were so early in the game. Yeah. All these hops you mentioned, what you were doing was so innate, was so like a, like a cut above the rest. But it's hard, like lots of people drink craft beer now. Lots of people enjoy craft beer. But going back to the years, however long I've been going, what we were doing back in the day was so early. Yeah. So, and, and that's what I want to kind of get over is the fact that, like, we were yeah. doing stuff that nobody would be doing. We're putting mango in the beer, so that's what the original was. Oh, yeah. Mango in my beer, why have you brewed yeah. my beer, you put mango in it. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly that. Yeah. And, to, and to put it down in, in the sea, with the, you know, put the way yeah. down. Yeah. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Uh, cheers yeah. to you. Cheers, thank you. I'm going to try this for the first time. Three bees. Three bees. It's a really hazy deeper in New World sense. With a Belgian yeast. Back right then, the hazies didn't exist. <laughs> I, get, I get that kind of Belgium aroma in you. Yeah. I get that with the American hops as well. With yeah. the Belgium aroma. Let's get in. Cheers. Yeah. Can I give you a cuddle? Oh! That, is, that is great beer. That is great, great beer. It's hoppy. It's Belgian, it's drinkable, it's refreshing, like a barbecue. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, it's you know, it goes to the beach. Brilliant, brilliant beer. Stone the Crows. Cheers. So, it's day two uh, of my time in York. Um, I've woken up this morning absolutely starving hungry, so my day is starting in Shambles Market with a full-on breakfast roll look with brown sauce. Just add the ash brown, gonna get the bacon and the sausage down me, and then we're get, we're gonna go again today. So let's get let's get into it. So it's currently day two. Finished that fantastic breakfast. It was really good. Just what the doctor ordered, uh, and I. Because it's 9.30 in the morning, I thought I'd come and uh, have a little look at the scenery here. So here is what looks like your castle. Now, I'm not sure if that's a, like, I don't know the history of this place, but uh, I'm not sure if it's just a lookout post or it's very, very small for a castle. What I'm kind of thinking is this car park here would have probably been where the original castle was i mean if you're from york and you know anything about this then please let me know it doesn't look these buildings are far too new to be to be castles but let's climb the stairs let's get up this staircase and uh, see what's in there you never know there might be a pub in there might be able to buy a pint at 9 30 in the morning in your castle <laughs> 
Right. Ah, I'm a member. I'm an actual English, English Harris's member. So maybe I can get in here for free. I'll get my wife to uh, send me the Clifford's Tower. I saw you. Uh, I'm allowed up here. Oh, you're like Fred Dibner climbing up here. Getting too blooming old for this. Do 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 do. Right. Oh, blimey. Oh. Come all the, way, all the way up here and it's locked. Oh, right. If you want to pause the video and have a read of that. Oh. Oh. I feel like I'm going to have a pull. Oh. Right. You can see why they built this lookout tower up here. I'm sure if I can I get around here, why not? What are they gonna do? Right. Look at this. There's York. God, look at the cathedral in the distance. Fantastic. Blooming crack in the building, look, you can see in. There's the entrance over there. Big kind of steel props, look, just to keep it. Probably looks like it wants to topple over. So they've had to put some supports in. Oh, we go all the way around here, I think. Look at that. Right, and back where we started. There we go, right. There was a look at... Uh, there was a look at your castle, right? Let's go and find a pub. Right, so Clifford's Tower has just opened and we're in. Look at this. Like a timeline here of Oh, I'm gonna go this way. I don't wanna go up, like, what's the point in going up there? You gotta go through here, I and mean, this is the way. Look at this. Love these old staircases. Reminder, imagine getting a barrel of beer to beer, though. Oh, it's a door, yeah. There's a room. Look at that. Right, up we go. Let's have a little look at this walkway. I, I tell you what, my leg, whenever I do that, whenever I walk up these sorts of things, my legs always start to tremble. I'm definitely no Fred Dibner. Oh yeah, my legs are, my backs are my calves when I get up this side. Definitely makes me, uh, 
a little bit, uh, oof, you know, not queasy, but uh, right, let's go in here. We might be able to find a bar now. Uh, right, here we go again. window looking out to York boom, boom, boom. oh look we're up on the roof oh wow oh my goodness my legs are, my legs are trembling oh look at this I tell you what if they had a bar in here if they had a pub here that would be amazing look at that the cathedral in the distance wow what a place this is I am a member of English Heritage I mentioned it earlier on uh, me and my wife love doing stuff like this visiting old kind of relics old buildings the past um, it's just something nice to do isn't it See different things. That now that building over there that looks like a brewery. Can you see the see the chimney in the distance? That has to be an old brewery of some kind, I imagine. Right, that was definitely the last look at Clifton Tower. Clifton or Clifford? Clifford Tower. Right, first pub of the day is the three tons. This is a Marston's pub now. But over time, you see them three tons there on that sign. Well, in 1782, it was named the three tons because it was three barrels which were housed at the rear of the pub. Each ton held 216 gallons of beer. So it's been here, been here for over 300 years. Look at the, look at the kind of everything's leaning and warping and bent. It's a typical, typical York pub. So. Let's, uh, let's have a look inside here then. Uh, Masters Pub, so they're going to send, sell a lot of kind of pedigree, uh, that sort of thing. What, what else do they serve? I mean, they bought brains down in South Wales. You've got Wainwrights, but they got some Red Cape beers, Valraki, Valkyrie, Battle Axe, Shipyard, that sort of thing. Hello, how are you doing? So where were these three tons situated then, at the back uh, of the pub? This back wall here. They would have been here, and they would have been 216 gallons of beer. Yeah, 260 odd pints. 260 pints, that, that is oh, amazing. Some, some of it. Yeah. Uh, the, the two plaques on the wall there. Right. Ah, right, okay, fantastic. Whether, whether you guys can uh, pause the video and read that, it's up, it's up to you. But uh, what a wonderful place. Thank you. Wonderful place, thank you very much. I'll be popping back later for a pint. Thank, thank you. you, thank you very much. Cheers. Right. Wow, thank you very much. Yeah. You know, mind your head, you know, it's that one of those pubs with low ceilings, lots of exposed timber. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Right, here we go. First pub of the day looked at. Uh, let's go and find the next one. So, I'm on the famous uh, Stonegate uh, Street here in York. Uh, we're making our way to the Punch Bowl. Uh, the, the reason why it's famous this street is because it's probably where kind of most of the really really old pubs from York probably the, the original pubs of York were based in this street so you can see halfway up there you've got the old star in that's claiming to be York's oldest pub but today or well, very quickly we're going to pop our head in here what a magnificent building this is this is called the punch bowl and yeah, what a fantastic, fantastic looking place. It's a Nicholson's pub. Um, I've just been in to chat to them uh, uh, about this pub. Um, his name was William Nicholson. There you go. And this is about the punch bowl. If you wanted to slowly pause the video and, and, and read that uh, 17th century story there. But let's get in. Let's get in because this place is fascinating. Again, all wooden doors. There's the Nicholson sign. Uh, so getting in here, wow, what a, what a fantastic place this is. 
great great looking place, lovely old fireplaces, timber wall building again, lovely leather seats on the walls. Walking back here, look at this, what a magnificent place. Great, great, great place. Lovely old wooden beams, oak beams. 17th century place. Little snugs. Look at this little snug room in here. Fantastic. Old fireplace here with probably, imagine that roaring away with a pint. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, beers, you've got Nicholson's Pale Ale, Rudgate Ruby Mild, Black Sheep, Madri Cal in Camden House, Peroni. Henry cider, that sort of thing going on. Uh, further back, uh, what does this say on the wall here? Uh, the first grandstand was built at York in 1754. Uh, York track is very spacious for uh, race goers and can accommodate 60,000 videos for their meetings. Right, okay, so York, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another mind your head sign. Um, people were smaller back in the day. York is very famous for horse racing too, so little kitchen, uh, staff beyond this point, and then you've got your toilets. So that's a look at the punch bowl in York. So let's leave the punch bowl then. Let's make our way up. What do you call Stonegate? One near the street. <laughs> Wonderful building. Oh, look at this. Hornby's Passage. Sorry. It's a locked lane now, I don't think you can get down there. Uh, yeah, lots of little kind of... Oh, this is, um, I know this is not beer related, but this is a really famous teddy bear shop established in 1990. Uh, I know it's not beer related, but um, if, you're ever, if you're having in, in York and you've got young kids, Here's a place to be, York's original teddy bears. <laughs> uh, what have we got? There's, there's some restaurants and stuff down that, that lane here, which is called uh, Little Stonegate. Uh, let's make our way to Ye Old Star Inn. So this is claiming to be York's oldest licensed inn, right, I see. So it's not the oldest pub in York. The oldest pub in York, I think, is the is is the Redgate pub that I need to get back to later on. Ah, but uh, right. Whether I think right, I think we are gonna have to come back. Uh, we're going to have to come back there. Let's have a little wander anyway. Uh, there's an old barley hole down, down that lane. We'll have a little look down there. That's got to be pub related, bread related. Yeah, but another, another beautiful street in New York. Look at these, look at these buildings. Uh, Trembling Madness is here as well. The House of Trembling Madness. Now where is I don't know if here? Trembling Madness Apartments. To the remains of the uh, 12th century house. Let's have a look down here. Is this Trembling Madness? I'm coming back here later. I'm meeting Rob from Hopsing. Uh, so I'm sure we'll do Trembling Madness later on. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Long, 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 long time. Look at this window there. Down the neck. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm not sure if this is private. It's a chamber. An old gallery. So where would Trembling Madness be? Ah, oh, Norman House. If you want to pause the video and read this about a Norman house. I tell you, Trembling Madness has got to be really close because there's a Delirium Tremens, Paul and a Martins, lots of different Iinga kegs. Yeah, so Trembling Madness must be here somewhere. Can't be up there, surely. 
Okay, I'll go back and I'll have a look at that, um, the old star in. <coughs> ah, here we are, here we are, here we are. This is trembling madness. Um, I will go and see if I can film in here. This is a really, really special kind of place, this. Fantastic. So, yeah, we're going into trembling madness. Uh, what lovely people they had here. So going in here then, this is just a treasure trove of fantastic beers, wine, spirits, ciders. Um, I might help myself to some crunchy cheese, Carolina Reaper crisps as well. But yeah, this is just like shelf upon shelf upon shelf of fantastic uh, craft beer. And they've got a bar in here as well. So let's throw a lots of different kind of whiskies on the go. Um, German. German beers, there's some of the Sam Smith beers there, more German beer, Belgian beer, Czech beer, yeah, wall to wall, the wall to wall of beer, look at that, let me just slow it down a little bit, and, and the lovely thing about this is there's lots of different levels, so, go on, downstairs to the toilet, so upstairs here, you got a wonderful bar, so uh, apparently it's very quiet today. I uh, might have to talk quite a bit over this though because we've got um, a little bit of music going, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, look at this. So this is the House of Trembling Madness with their fantastic... Look at the windows here. All kind of lean in and all broken and whatnot. But yeah, fireplaces, bar, beer. Yeah, wonderful. Wonderful. Right, so keeping on talking, um, trying not to get our video struck off for monetization. Uh, yes, so thank you very much for the quick walk around. <laughs> really appreciate welcome. it. Thank, thank you. you. Well, the wonderful chap behind the bar just told me that um, actually downstairs in Trembling Madness, I was just about to leave, but they said downstairs they've got um, spirits too. Yeah, look at this. So this is the cellar. So upstairs in the bar was like boom, you know, gave a Bon Jovi going along and down here, nice and peaceful and calm and yeah. More my cup of tea this, yeah, look at this. Wonderful. So that is a look at the House of Trembling Madness. You must have a look at it in Stonegate in wonderful York. Hey, who's this guy? Right, I am back at the Old Star Inn because it's open. They've opened up. A uh, bit of talking because they have music down this alley. Uh, three historic beer gardens. I'm not sure what song it is, but uh, it's playing quite loud, loudly down here. So, wait a minute, look at this go. Uh, here's a look at it. Wonderful, wonderful old pub. Right, here we go then, I got permission to film in the pub, so let's get in. Oh, isn't that amazing? So this is the oldest pub in York, the old fireplaces, low ceilings. It's a bit quieter inside the pub than, the, 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 than outside the pub, it's like a disco out there with all the music. So, um, more fireplaces, kind of little coopy holes, craft beer, I think, to be honest with you, I think it's a uh, green... I think this is a Green King pub. But yeah, lots and lots of stuff going on here. Little serving hatches where maybe this would have been an old bar or something. Maybe it was like set out a little bit differently. So, um, I've actually eaten here before. I ate, I ate here in 2020 with uh, Mel, my wife. Another small, hello. Another small beer garden outside. Yeah, this is the uh, oldest licensed pub in York. Great. Right, let's get out of here. Right, what I should really do is show the beers before I go. The old start in Best Bitter, Abbott, All Peculiar, Timothy Taylor's Landlord, Level Head and Flintite, plus some Estrella Dam and some Beera Moretti. Right, I'm definitely going this time. Right, I'm still in the old stand in because the lovely lady who's uh, tidying up outside here told me I need to come and have a look at this miniature beer garden on the side 
because you can sit here and you can look at the minster York's famous minster in the background what a lovely little quiet area this is um, wonderful yeah York's oldest pub beer garden minster perfect right another famous part of York and it's drinking craft beer and real ale culture plus of course cocktails is a uh, Lendl Cellars now I was here in 2020 and it's kind of like everybody was telling me to come here because it's um, vaulted, historic vaulted ceilings ah is it open is it closed uh, well let's see let's have a little walk around yeah, isn't this amazing so uh, steakhouse uh, again low low beams low beams everywhere <laughs> uh, yeah and it's fantastic right so I think maybe we can uh, maybe we can find our way back in up here my, my apologies I have to do a lot of talking and there's a lot of music in these venues and what I'm trying to do is uh, kind of get over the get over the copyright strike in with the uh, with me waffling on. Is it open? No. Ah, Green King Pub. Um, maybe, 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 maybe. I can get in down the back. Let me go and ask them politely. Right, the lovely Emma said we can go in and have a look at the cellars. So here we are. Um, uh, I suppose it's down here. Let's go and have a wander around. Ah, here we are, here we are, here we are. Look at this. My goodness me. Ho, ho, ho. So this is a Green King pub, um, but yeah, th this would have been where they would have either kept wine, beer, whiskey, they, they, you know, when they wanted to keep things really nice and cold. But look at this, absolutely fantastic. Uh, how old is this? Oh God, it goes on. It goes on and on. There's a bar down here as well. Well, this is, this is absolutely fantastic. And that was the way, that was the door that I tried to uh, get in through. So what beers do we have? Green King, so you can have Green King IPA, Le Levelhead, Flintire, Stranadam, uh, Abbott, Spring Break, you know, that, those sorts of kind of Green King beers. I wonder how old this place is. It's got to be a few, good few hundred years, haven't it? Um, again, lots of talking, my apologies, I'm trying to get over the monetization of all of this. Uh, it's very difficult to film these places. Uh, it's probably the reason why I don't do it as much as I used to, because I find it quite stressful. I find it quite like, uh, you know, you're running around and you're trying to do a lot of talking to get past the monetization and, uh, well, it is what it is. Right, we've done the vlog. Right, I'm waiting for the Roman bath to open, but before I go in the Roman bath, there's an actual Roman bath in that pub. I'm going to go in the Three Cranes. Now, this pub was built in 1749. 1749. Let's have a look at this. Got a gentleman outside saying it's a, a proper pub. So, yeah, oh, what a nice sort of kind of cosy little place this is. The fireplace going on and. Lots of different beers, John Smith's, Carling, Guinness, Stella Artois. Is there another? Oh, yeah, another bar on the back here. Look at that. Uh, on this spot in 1765, nothing happened. <laughs> I like that. I was expecting some stuff. Well, it's just toilets down the back there. But yeah, um, a fantastic, fantastic uh, traditional old pub. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, bye bye. Right. And that was a look at the three cranes. 
You can kind of tell, can you? They were trying to tell me that it was one of the oldest pubs in York, 1749. Um, but you can tell it's got that, it does have that kind of really old, kind of oldy worldy feel to it. Um, yes. I think, I think what we'll do now, there's, there is another pub I want to find. Uh, oh, there's, 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 there's a Rudgate pub that I'm looking to find. And there's something called the Browns Hotel, uh, which is just back here. So um, I'll carry on filming now. This is the, this is the main thoroughfare fair through York. Uh, see you all later on. Right, we're back at uh, Shambles Market. There's a Gerd and Henry's that I probably should go in. It's a tea room no more. Probably was a pub years ago. Um, but this is why I'm back at Sham Shambles Market. Is I'm at a Thornbridge pub called the Market Pat Cat. <laughs> the Market Cat. Now, as you walk in, what a wonderful, wonderful pub this is. Fantastic timber work. Um, lots, of course, Thornbridge beer. Lucas being really good. Cashberg. Brock, Green Mountain, Middle Pilsner, very very good beer. Uh, really really good stuff. Really really good pub. Uh, who's that? Who's that in the window? <laughs> little like uh, lovely little kind of like cubby areas, and I think this is up over three floors. I think you can kind of get up. Stairs. Ah yes, there's an upstairs here as well. Uh, right, so yeah, what a lovely and it's just a so it's just a toilet upstairs, so I won't go up again. But yeah, this is the this is the market cat. Uh, isn't it great though? Isn't it great? Because you you got your kitchen over here and lots and lots of windows looking over shambles market and then little pubs and kind of restaurants and coffee houses and whatnot yeah fantastic i'm sure i'll be coming in here later on right not supposed to do this this is the burns hotel this is a samuel smith's pub i'm just going to poke my head in very quickly uh and then uh, go again but yeah this is the inside of the burns hotel um very, very, quite a like, quite a strange thing because um, people look at you weird if you're filming in a Sam Smith pub. I've just been into this place. This is absolutely fascinating. There's actually, if I can just make my way. So what we have here is a normal, a normal pub up on the top. But look, you've got kind of like Roman figures and stuff. And this is called the Roman bath because it's an actual Roman bath in here. So the pub, Carlin, Guinness, Foster's, that sort of thing, of course, John Smith's been the John Smith's pub, landlord, normal pub, and then you come out here, thank you very much. Um, coming out here and then going downstairs, right, thank you very much. It's, uh, I couldn't believe this when I, when I walked down here. Absolutely couldn't believe it. But you come down here and there's an actual, an actual Roman bath. It's, it's 2,000 years old, is this, Graham? It is. Yeah. How, when, when did they find this, if you don't mind me asking? 1929. 1929. Uh, on YouTube, yes, yes. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, this was found in 1929, excavated in 1930. It's military because um, the pub you're underneath is in the bottom right corner of a huge fortress. Right. Iboracum, for most of the time, was Northern Fortress of the whole Roman Empire. Right, okay. You'd be walking around Iboracum most of the day, but um, right down there is Roman street level, so we've excavated no more than about 3%. Really, so so we don't know, like all the way around here? The, the, the could be... fortress here, the other side of the main river is the town about the same size. So. Really? And they... Yeah. Unbelievable. We've got a bit of the coal bath over there. This is a hypercore system under floor heating, so yeah. there's an extreme heat and furnace over there. Right. Under the floor through those three channels at the back. Hot air to the floors, floors into the rooms, the base of the bath into the water. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, can I have a little walk over there? Is that okay? Can walk around? Thank you. So just walk you do. Yeah. Uh, this is incre absolutely incredible. So, 
did they did they find it by accident? Was it like they were doing some work and they come across this by accident? 1929, the pub was called the Mail Coach Inn. The Mail Coach Inn? Yeah, and in the corner over there where the coal bath is, there was uh, the stables for the coach horses. Right, okay. They didn't need them by 1929. Right. The petrol engine came in. So they knocked down the stables, found the coal bath, said, oh, well, no. Yeah. They realised it was important. They were going to do some major work to the pub. Came over here and found this bit. And found this or something. And luckily kept it so we could see it today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, thank you very much. Check this out, Mel. So the pub's upstairs. They were knocking stables down in 1929. They didn't need them anymore. Back down there. And they come across this. <laughs> Look at this. 2000 year old Roman bath beneath a pub. It used to be called the Mail House, the Mail, Coach Mail Coach Inn. The Mail Coach Inn. And they changed it to the Roman Bath for, well, obvious reasons. Check this out. It's like, um, it's like uh, Kyle Leon. It's like yeah. Kyle. Twin, twin fortress with Kyle Leon. It's a twin fort fortress with Kyle Leon, is it? Well, three fortresses, Yeah? This is the most notable one. You've got to many of Diva. Yep. Chester. Chester. And then Kyle Leon. Ah, that's where we're, that's where I'm from, South, down South Wales. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Look at that. So this unassuming place with scaffolding all around it is actually the newer version of Trembling Madness. And I'm here with the one and only, the one and only Rob from Hoxley. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, how are you doing? What, what a lovely building. Lovely, it's an amazing place. lovely building, yeah, yeah. So for ages, this was like a, a place that would sell like leather bags and like football trophies and stuff. Right, okay, yeah. And when, when these guys like took it on and they, they were like tearing it all about because it was just like a shop, really. Yeah. Like, trophies and crystal wear and they found loads of like World War II graffiti. So you've got like cartoons of like Hitler and stuff. In the basement. It's really? Up now, but yeah, it's amazing. Oh, we'll have a look. But they're going incredible. Too. So, what were you? What was you telling? We, of course, I came in here before. What were you telling me about the lines in here? There. So, so 11, 11, 11, 11 keg lines. Yeah. Three cast lines. Cast same up and up, upstairs and downstairs. Yeah. But downstairs, different to upstairs. Right. Okay. So you've got Twenty. Two. Twenty two different. Oh, wow. In this one building. Oh, it's amazing. Great, great. You've got some good shit. I mean, you've got Grim from New York, you've got Burden, Curl, yeah. uh, Beak, Brewery, Hugh. Oh, so look at that. Some of the best there. I'm going to try some Marble track, Burden. I think. Well, yeah, good. yeah, I'm going to go track, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And some, I'm going to get, I'm going to probably, I'm going to buy myself some crisps too. So there, that that's a look. Let me let me have a little walk around the pub a little bit, but this is a a look at uh, the other trembling madness bar. Look at this, what a lovely lovely place, amazing. <laughs> Finally, finally, with Rob Derbyshire of Hopsy. The idiot. I'm going to pull my chair. No, let me pull my chair that, around. That's proof. There he is. Yes, there he is. I, I've been talking about Rob for days, for two days since I've been here. Um, it's 10 to 8 on Saturday night. We're finally filming a video. Yep. We've got two halves of Rivington. Rivington, what is it, Rob? Poison of Madness. Right, okay. It's a collab, a collab with the House of Madness. Uh, no, no, I don't know. It's uh, it IPA. Uh, like my eyes can't make it out. <laughs> what's, the, what's the Amy? I'm going to go 6.5 <laughs> because six point, every IPA is 6.5. 6 6.5 6 with Citra. That's all IPAs are these days. Yeah. Um, I'm holding it. So, if you're watching this video... Sorry, I'm sharing drinks, it's really cool. We're looking at the little aromas. I love this guy. I bloody love this guy. I really... In my, work, in my very Welsh way, I bloody love this guy. <laughs> Did you ever see um, Dave from Wyland? Did he only... No. The impression of him. Was he? 
Have you not seen it? I thought I'd seen you years ago. No. He goes, he goes like, little, the, look at the little aromas. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly. It's a wonderful world. He said he was outside your house. Was he? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a conversation about this in a minute. Anyway, let's crack on. Right, we're going to crack on. Um, I talk about this guy an awful lot because um, me and Rob go back, what, what, 11, 12, 13, 13 years Doing at what? least. Um, he's a great... I, I, I love... Check out hopscene.com. No, that's not existed for years. Haven't it? YouTube.com forward slash Check out YouTube for a long time. YouTube Anyway. Here we are. We're drinking an IPA. Trembling Madness on Lendl, which is the bigger location. We're on a part of Rivington. Poison and Madness. From this distance, I'm going to 6.5. Yeah. I feel. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's it's go. very nice, isn't it? It's, it's beautiful. Hey, is, is this the first room to you for review? Did you say? Uh, no, I, I had a, an IPA from them a couple of years ago. Very, very good. Very, extremely it's good. It's really good. Yeah. Juicy. Really juicy. Yeah. I'm going to go pear juice. Not like, yeah. a, just like a juicy garlic pear. Oh, like a oh, touch, of, touch of garlic. Touch of garlic. Oh, I like it. I like, like it. Yeah, I touch like of it. garlic. Yeah, yeah, a bit savoury. Yeah, a bit savoury. Yeah. Yeah, a bit dry. Dirty. Dirty hot. Dirty. Dirty yes. hot from the Alps. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I like it. Yeah. Um, so we are in uh, the house of trembling madness. Uh, nice. Nice. We're trying to enjoy quiet dinner. We don't like being filmed behind you. Oh, yeah. So if you're going to do this, do you want to do it against the wall where you were? Yeah. You were on it anyway. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll stop it anyway. Okay. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Uh, we'll stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so we are at the Maltings Ale House. Let's get in there, it's a free house. Um, lovely people in here. Um, timbers, timber walls again. Um, straight inside here, we got, we got a lovely glass window and fireplaces and timbers and yeah, wonderful. Um, yeah, this is the pub. Wonderful, really nice. Yeah, little kind of like snugs area, outside areas. Uh, yeah, this is the Maltins. I'm gonna go and ask Rob what are you having. Rob, what are you having, mate? What are you going for? So I've got a what have we got that, for? We're just pulling the uh, oh the uh, the Maltin from Fondale. Maltin. Brussels and Roost. So yes, and then that's half of the. Uh, oh, I forgot what it's called. So it's a, a version of Baby Babyface and Assassin from oh. Roosters, which yes. is I'd say kind of like it's quite iconic, really. So my mate Tom, yeah, um, years ago. When he was working at Bay Ritz with, with the iconic Zach Avery. Yeah, the Zach Avery. Yeah, he he Avery. brewed yeah. a version of, well, which became Babyface baby Assassin. Yeah. Which I'm sure a lot of people have died by now. I've tried it. It's a yeah. beautiful thing. Yeah. So Tom yeah. first brewed that as a homebrew. Right. The, the Tom's family then bought Roosters. Who right. were, uh, okay. uh, uh, yeah, so that becomes like a massive beer, and then this is like a lower ABV version of that. Okay, well, well look at this. Look at all the beers on. This oh, is fantastic. 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 Erdingers and Leffes and yeah. It's always, it's always had a really good, good kind of like trad selection. This yeah. The first place I ever had. Red and back Grand Cru. Yeah. Even though probably no one knew what this kind of like yeah. weird I know. beer was. And, yeah. um, um, Harv is Albert Lecoq. Yeah. Do you know the, their Imperial style? Yeah. Which yeah. is kind of slightly bread. Yeah. It's yeah. First place, so I like, I saw it in the bottom of the fridge and I'm like, is that what I think it is? Like, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very much an institution. Yeah, over like, like, Bay New York is, like, is this place. Let's, let's, let's yeah. go and drink these beers. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, this is the very end of our York 
uh, beer sort of the pubs and bars of York. I had a wonderful, wonderful time. I'm gonna end up in a fish and chip shop eating a jumbo sausage and batter with chips and curry sauce. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. I hope you liked the video. I'm gonna eat this and go to bed. Stone the crows. Boom, cheers.